The father of the hydrogen bomb regretted giving up on thorium, a nuclear fuel that could power us for thousands of years. But why did we abandon it in the first place? And can it make a comeback with some companies claiming it's feasible? Let's explore the truth behind thorium and its potential. The nuclear power option that was explored in the 1950s and then forgotten. Thorium. Some people say it's much better than the uranium reactors we use today, and we should give it another chance. Thorium is a heavy element that can be mined from the earth and used in fission reactors like the ones we have now. Both thorium and uranium create heat by a controlled chain reaction that drives a steam turbine and a generator to produce electricity. The difference is in how they do it. Uranium fissions directly when it is hit by a neutron, releasing energy and more neutrons that hit other uranium atoms. Thorium doesn't fission right away when it is hit by a neutron. It absorbs the neutron and turns into a uranium atom. Then this new uranium atom fission, when it is hit by another neutron, releasing heat. This may seem less efficient, but actually it allows more of the thorium in a reactor to turn into uranium and then fission than trying to fission the uranium atoms directly as we do now. This means that we can get much more energy out of thorium than uranium. We can use 40 or 50 times more of the available energy in thorium than in uranium before we have to throw away the fuel. This means less mining and less nuclear waste, which are some of the biggest problems with nuclear energy. That's why some people say we should take another look at thorium. But why did we stop using it in the first place? And what are the challenges of using it now? Let's find out more about thorium and its potential. Thorium sounds great, but why isn't anyone using it? Well, we did try it once. From 1965 to 1969, the U.S. ran a molten salt reactor experiment at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. They wanted to see if they could use thorium as an alternative or more efficient fuel than uranium, because they were worried about running out of uranium. They used a liquid fuel with uranium and thorium mixed in molten salt, instead of the solid fuel that normal nuclear plants use. The liquid fuel was heated up by the reactor and produced a lot of heat. The experiment showed that thorium could work as a fuel. The scientist who discovered plutonium and the head of the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission at the time said it was a success. But then in 1973, the Atomic Energy Commission stopped funding thorium reactors and focused on other designs that seemed more promising. So what went wrong? Well, there were some problems with the experiment. The biggest problem was that the metal pipes that held the liquid fuel were cracking. The liquid fuel had some fission products that attacked the metal and made deep cracks in it. The metal wouldn't last long enough for a bigger plant. They needed to do more research on the materials before they could make a viable design. The second problem was that the liquid fuel made a lot of tritium, which is a radioactive isotope. Tritium is very small and hard to keep inside the reactor. It escaped into the environment and got into the groundwater. Tritium can be harmful to people if they drink contaminated water. It can cause health problems. Now, other reactors also make tritium, like some plants in Canada, but they have learned how to deal with it over time. Because of these problems and other reasons, thorium reactors didn't get much attention in the U.S. for the next 50 years. Only a few scientists and engineers kept working on them. Thorium has been ignored for a long time, but things have changed in the last decade. More people are interested in nuclear power and alternative designs and fuels like thorium. Some companies and governments are working on thorium reactors and trying to overcome the past challenges. China is leading the way with two different thorium reactors under construction. One is a liquid-fueled thorium molten salt reactor that is based on the U.S. experiment from the 1960s. It started operating in late 2022 and aims to build a bigger plant by 2030. The other is a solid-fueled pebble-bed thorium reactor that is testing another approach. China is investing a lot in thorium reactors. India is another country that has a lot of thorium, but not much uranium. India has been planning to use thorium reactors since the 1950s as part of a three-stage plan for energy independence. The first stage was heavy water reactors, 
which they have already built. The second stage is breeder reactors, which they are building now. The third stage is thorium reactors, which they are still working on. India also has another design called the Advanced Heavy Water Reactor that uses mixed fuels with some thorium. This helps India use more of its own thorium and less imported uranium. There are also some commercial companies that are developing thorium reactors. Flive Energy is one of them. It has a liquid-fueled thorium reactor that it says is safer, simpler, more efficient, and less wasteful than conventional reactors. It says it can run on a piece of thorium the size of a golf ball for a person's lifetime. Flyb Energy's design is also based on the U.S. experiment from the 1960s. Forkin is another company that has a liquid-fueled thorium reactor, but it uses shipbuilding techniques to make it cheaper and faster to build and transport. It can send the reactor to any place that needs it and then bring it back for maintenance after eight years. Copenhagen Atomics is another company that has a liquid-fueled thorium reactor, but it uses existing spent nuclear fuel along with thorium. It says this can reduce nuclear waste and make use of what we already have. It also says its design can fit in a standard shipping container, which makes it easy to deploy anywhere. Thorium has some advantages, but also some challenges. Thorium is an alternative fuel to uranium that can last much longer and produce more energy. It can also improve safety and reduce nuclear waste. Some thorium reactors use liquid fuel with molten salt, which can make them simpler and more efficient. Thorium reactors can also be cheaper than conventional uranium reactors. A study found that a thorium molten salt reactor could cost $53.51 per megawatt hour compared to $63.08 for a uranium reactor. Forkin, a company that makes floating thorium reactors, says they could cost between $30 and $50 per megawatt hour. That's similar to wind and solar, which cost between $30 and $40. But cost is not everything. Thorium also has some problems especially with liquid fuel. The metal pipes that hold the liquid fuel can crack and corrode over time. The liquid fuel needs complex chemical processing to separate the good fuel from the waste. The liquid fuel is very radioactive and hard to handle and clean up. The liquid fuel also makes a lot of tritium, which is a radioactive isotope that can escape into the environment and cause health problems. Thorium reactors also have less experience than uranium reactors, which have been operating for over 10,000 years. Thorium reactors have only operated for about 50 years in total, mostly in small test reactors. This means we don't know as much about thorium reactors as we do about uranium reactors. We don't have the same knowledge, training, experience, and infrastructure for thorium reactors. There could be some surprises that we don't expect. Thorium's future depends on how well we can solve these problems. There are many people who are working on thorium reactors and who are very excited about them. But sometimes they sound too good to be true. Watch this video to see the biggest myths about thorium that people believe too easily. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and thanks for watching.